Mazal Dli is one of the air element signs. And for those of you who were here in the very beginning when we spoke about the different Yesodot, it's important to keep in mind that we, even though we have 12 signs, we have four elements. And what that means is that there are three signs that share an element. And we discussed the differences, important differences about the elements, whereas fire tends to be much more impulsive, energetic, exciting. The earth elements tend to be more rigid, more stubborn, more practical. Air is more intellectual, more communicative, more expressive in certain ways, and more logical. And the water elements are the more sentimental, the more emotional, the more feeling. Every one of those elements in itself tells us a lot about an individual. In other words, if anybody is in a Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini, they will have many things in common, many things that they will share in common. They're very similar. Nonetheless, they are also very, very different in their style, in the way they communicate, in what's important to them. But it's important to keep in mind that tonight we're going to be speaking about the air element, Aquarius. And Aquarius is not really very similar to Libra or Gemini. You will notice quite a few differences. But don't forget, this is an air element. Nevertheless, and what I, what I mean by an air element, and I need to emphasize this, is that there's no emphasis, there's no priority, there's not as much importance as there is, for example, in the water element's need for emotion. And that, that, that does not mean that the air element or Aquarius is not an emotional individual, not a warm, not an affectionate. It's just that that is not the emphasis. That is not his forte. And you need to keep that in mind because everyone has an area where he's strong in, an area where he's weak in. We do not necessarily change. It is very difficult to change. It's almost impossible to change. But we can adapt, adapt certain habits and learn from other people as to what should be done, what is correct to be done, what is not correct. But it does not mean that we will be changing our natures. It does not mean that we can become someone else. In some ways, you are who you are. But you can definitely learn to refine yourself, refine your midot, your character. You can work on yourself. You can give a better impression. You can learn to get along better with those who are not similar to you. There's a lot of things that one can do through his free will. If he wants to succeed in life, succeed in being a better parent, a better husband, better wife, and so forth, then he has to learn certain rules. One has to know himself. And then, hopefully, if he has the strong will of making this important decision of not necessarily changing myself, but hopefully adapting myself to certain situations and, and attempting to live with those who are different than me, by respecting the differences, then you can get along almost with anyone. So even though there are differences, it is possible to learn what those differences are and to adapt to them, and to live with them, to get along with them. As I always do, give a small introduction. Some of the points that you will notice have to do with the sign Either the sign is lacking in them and has to learn from them, or these are some of the strong points in the sign that we can learn from. Rabbis tell us in Pirkei Avot, Eizil Chacham, Halomed Mikol Adam, and it is written elsewhere, Eizil Chacham, Haro'et Hanolad, who is smart, he who is prepared to learn from everyone, or he who considers the consequences of his actions. Smart is more important than intelligence. Intelligence is chokhmah, one that has, uh, or yeda actually, one has acquired a certain amount of yeda, of chokhmah, but does not necessarily apply it, does not necessarily have the interest of learning more. A true chacham, the rabbis tell us, is one who's always thirsty to learn more. And that is why a talmid chacham is called a talmid chacham. He's always a student. 
He does not ever, never consider himself to be an expert. Always a Talmud, always a student. A true, intelligent, true, smart, clever man is always prepared to learn, even if it means learning from someone who's younger than him. He's interested in the truth, he's interested in the chokhmah, and therefore, what's the difference? Who has it? I'm going to go and get the chokhmah. That is a true chacham that is not willing to compromise. Chokhmah is important to him, and wherever he can find it, he will learn it. Even if it means learning from somebody who's younger than him. Imagine somebody who has an ego that may be in conflict with his desire of, of learning something. Learning from someone younger, but he's not a real chacham if he's not willing to learn from someone who's younger. From everyone. And he who considers the consequences of his actions. Aroet anulad, which means what? That you think about the situation before you embark on it, before you do anything. What are the pros and cons of everything? A true chacham needs to evaluate. And in order to evaluate, it means you can't be overconfident. It means you, be, you need to be willing to seek the advice of others. All that is important in order to predict as best as possible what the consequences of your actions will be. So a true chacham does not jump into anything. He looks at the situation, evaluates it, deliberates it, and then goes on to decide whether he's going to do it or not. Point number two, don't look down at any human being. Alti baz lechol adam. Rabbis tell us in Perkei Avot, be very careful. Every human being is special in some way. There may be a, a time in the future where you may need him. And that man who's cleaning the streets, who's a janitor, may one day be mayor of Los Angeles. Yes. So alti baz lechol adam. That person who appears to be very low, very simple, a nothing in your eyes, nonetheless he's a human being, give him the respect, don't look down at him. Everyone is special in some way. Number three, be the first to greet and greet all. And that is another famous saying, Lulam ya adam magdim lekabel kol adam, or magdim beshlom kol adam, when you see somebody in the street, it's Shabbat, say Shabbat Shalom to him. Don't wait for him to say it. He may be distracted. He may not be thinking about you, may not observe you. You be the first one. If you're not the first one and he noticed you, he may think that you have something against him. So always be the first one. Why should I be the first one? Let him be the first one? Well, it's just a problem with the ego. Be the first one because it's important to, get, to greet everyone to be friendly to everyone. So there's two parts to this idea of Magdim Shalom Kol Adam. Magdim, Tia Ta Kodem, you'd be the first. And the Kol Adam, every human being, Jews and non-Jews. It, it doesn't say Yehudim, it says everybody. So greet everyone. We've already covered the point of the Sever Panim Yafot, which means to greet everyone with a happy countenance, not with a bitter face. In other words, when you do greet people, you want to be nice, you want to smile. This form of communication, even though it's silent, it says a lot. It produces positive atmosphere amongst people. It helps unite people. It's, it's a very good thing for society where people greet themselves. As you may have heard from time to time, Goim coming over to you. They don't know you from anywhere. Hi, how are you doing? Good morning. You know, try that in New York, and they'll, they'll know that you're not from there. Because you know, in New York, they don't say these things. But it's not nice. The correct way is to greet people, to be friendly to everyone, and not to wait for the other one to greet us. The fourth point may be very familiar to you. Envy, desire, and the pursuit of honor drive a person out of this world and perhaps even of the world to come. These are three, um, I guess we can call them traits or bad habits that people may have, people in general, and if one, anyone possesses any one of the three, if they're so powerful in themselves that they can drive a person out of this world. Drive a person out of this world means that he can leave this world prematurely before his time. He was meant to live to 80, but he goes at 45, Hazrat Shalom. Why? Because he's never happy. He's always envious. He always wants to have what the other one has. He's jealous. Or he, he has many, many desires that he can't get his hand on because he doesn't have the money, can't afford it. Or he, he, he so much pursues the honor, wants everybody to honor him, but somehow they're not honoring him. So it eats him up. 
That's called kavod. Some people have a problem. It's a disease. Some of us, who cares? You know, as long as people are nice, they don't want to honor, that's fine. Who needs the honor, right? You can't build your home with honor. In other words, you need money, you need other things. But for some people, that's fuel. That's their fuel, the honor. They live from that, or they live for that. So the rabbis warn us, be careful. These three things are no good. They're not good for your health. Not only are they not good for your health, you can lose your olam haba. Because as a result of these three, if you misbehave, if you conduct yourself in the wrong way, because of these, or one of these three, you may lose your olam haba. So be very careful with these three, that they're, they're so unimportant. It's, it's a bunch of nonsense. Nevertheless, people fall in the trap of the yetzara, the evil inclination, because of their nature. Obviously, it's in their nature. But control yourself. And last but not least, our hearts are affected by our actions. That is a famous saying that I think is mentioned in various places, but at least it's mentioned in the Sefer HaChinuch. Sefer HaChinuch in discussing the various mitzvot. We have 613 of them, many of them which are not so logical. Nevertheless, they all have some explanation. And what the common denominator is for many of the mitzvot is this last saying here that halevavot nimshachot achara peulad. And what that means is, when we do certain things, our hearts are affected. Even though we may not believe or understand something, if we do it a lot, it will affect us. When we give charity regularly, we will become generous, kind. At least it will help us be more generous and kind. And the same is with love. As many say, that true love develops with time and part of it has to do with the act of giving to the other when you continuously give take care of show respect regardless of the, of the means of giving all of that produces a connection with the individual you give up your time you talk to the person you take your time and you spend your time with them and you give of yourself to them as opposed to what as opposed to just giving to yourself taking care of your own body and your own interests as a result of this pe'ula, of this action, it produces love. It produ what is love? I mean, love is a big word. It, let's simplify the word love. It produces a strong connection, a strong bond that now these two people have an interest in each other. Let's not, get, let's not make it complicated. Love means that one cares for the other. One has an interest to the other. One wants a connection with the other. That's very simple. How is that produced? One way is, of course, by giving. And continuously giving, then what will happen is a levavot nimshachot ahara peulot. The hearts will be affected by our actions, by doing certain mitzvot, honoring our parents, putting on tzitzit, tefillin. Regardless, these, if we do them over time, they produce certain results, and they affect us. But Israel, he wanted to lezakech. Not only that we should have many merits, but he wanted to refine our character, refine who we are as human beings. That is why he gave us the Torah, he gave us the mitzvot. And it is by way of the Torah and the mitzvot that if we follow them and we conduct ourselves, our lives according to them, we will become certain types of human beings. Unfortunately, that did not always happen because people pursue their own personal interests, right? and their tavot, their desires, and not the will and desire of Hashem. But this is a rule, and this is a guarantee, that if we follow the Torah, then the Torah will make of us, the mitzvot will make of us decent human beings. Aquarius, the 11th sign of the zodiac, begins approximately January 20th, or 21, depending on the year and location of your birth, and goes to approximately February 19th. So even though it says here February 18th, the real cutoff date is most of the time, I believe, is February 19. This is an air element sign, which means they're very friendly. The fire signs are much more extrovert than the air, but None, nevertheless, Aquarius is a friendly sign, a humanitarian. They're honest, they're loyal, original, inventive, independent. 
These are just basic characteristics of this sign. They can be very unpredictable. They can be very contrary and very detached. As every sign that we discussed, they all have their strengths and their weaknesses. And some have a lot of the strengths and some have a lot of the weaknesses of the sign. Depending on the hour you were born, it, it depends on a lot of other things, not just the month you're born in. The education you receive, the friends you have, the books you read, the teachers you, you have, all of these affect at least our mind. They may not affect your character, but a lot of these things in the environment affect the way we think and act. How we feel, of course, will a lot depend on the hour and the month that you were born. As I always have done, we'll see an in-depth description of the sign. It takes a lot of work to really define a sign. And then we will see some differences between the men and the women, some advice for the children, and some advice for how to get along or understanding your boss if you have an Aquarius boss. Just want to remind you again that a lot of the information that you will see in the sign is pretty much I spread it out. You may find additional clues to the individual when I talk about the man, or I talk about the woman, or I talk about the child. I wanted to spread it out so you should get a, a good picture of the whole sign and not just lump it all in the very beginning. So if you are looking for something, you may see it at the end. And if there's something that you think that does not apply to you, it's very possible it has to do with the hour. Just remember the hour is extremely important because let's say you're an Aquarius by the month sign. That means you're intellectual. That means you're more of an air element. But your hour is water. If your hour is water, it will make you much more emotional, which means that if you see a very moving movie, film, you will cry because of all that water in you. Where a pure Aquarian will not cry necessarily. Right now we're going to discuss a typical Aquarius. The typical ones are generally kind, tranquil by nature. They're not very loud. They're not fire. They're much more of the calmer type. They're not easily moved. But if you take this, what appears to be a ma'ala, a, a strength, and you expand it a little bit, you know what it does to an individual? It makes him indifferent. When a person is too calm, too tranquil, he can become indifferent. Nothing bothers him. And that could be sometimes a problem. Nothing bothers him. Well, sometimes he should be bothered by something. So we will see. It all depends how much of the volume you raise in this tranquil nature. He enjoys defying public opinion. They're very, very much known for this. They don't necessarily agree or go by the standards, by tradition. They will take it apart, find something wrong with it, and oppose it if necessary. And sometimes just for the fun of it. They're, they can sometimes be very confident of themselves and not necessarily go along with the instructions that they are given, either because they want to experiment something else, or because they don't think that the person is right, or simply because they're in the mood of it. But otherwise, they're soft-spoken and courteous. Many of them can be very funny, concited, and independent. Does everybody know here what concited means? Conceited? Who decided that it should be pronounced conceited? Huh? Yeah. Anyway, conceited? Yeah. Do you know what conceited means? Conceited is not arrogant exactly. There's a small difference between them. Aquarians are known to be somewhat self-centered. Self-centered, that means they're into themselves. Why are they into themselves? Well, you'll see soon because of certain ideas that they have about life. And they're very, very strongly idealistic about these ideas. And it creates a certain aloofness. That's another, perhaps, difficult word for some of you whose English may not be the first language. A certain aloofness means a certain sense of, I know it's right. This is the correct way to do it. It doesn't mean they're arrogant. Don't mistake this with arrogance. Arrogance belongs to the fire element. Big shots. On the contrary, they hate big shots. They're, they're totally not compatible with big shots. But it's, it's, it creates a certain detachment. In other words, 
you know, I think this is right, I'm going to pursue this, this is what I'm going to do. Remember, Aquarius is also a fixed sign. Remember, we have fixed, Taurus is fixed for the earth, Aquarius is fixed for the air, and you have Scorpio who's fixed for the water, and you have, uh, who, who are we missing? And we have Leo who's fixed with the fire. The fixed signs are a little bit more stable, more firm, and do not change. And as we will see later on, because of that, that creates a certain degree of stubbornness too. They're fixed, so they're not adaptable, they're not changeable. Very independent. Independent means that they want to do things the way they think they should be done. But typically they are diplomatic, gentle, sympathetic, and timid. Now notice diplomatic here. You won't find, you know, a lot of people who do not agree with some of this, the, the skeptics, they will say, oh, this applies to everybody. You, I, I intentionally wrote almost everything that I wrote in such a way that you will see it cannot apply to everyone. Of all the 12 signs, does anybody here know, see, if you were here from the very beginning, we're almost holding that in, who are the diplomats, who are the tactful ones? Diplomat means tactful. Huh? No. Libra. Libra is a tactful person. You know what tactful means? He will not be dugri. He will not tell it to you as it is. He will dress it up. And you need an air element that knows how to talk. Air knows how to communicate. And air is careful in choosing his words properly. It's, but especially if he does not want to look down at you. Especially if he's not very critical at you. So this is Aquarius. Aquarius and Aquarians and Libras are the most tactful of all the signs. You can have a tactful water sign too. But usually they are careful. They, are, they, they can be very, very tactful. Gentle, sympathetic, and timid. Again, usually, not always, but usually that's the, the description of the sign. Their nature is a bit unpredictable. That is also something known about Aquarius. He'll surprise you. All out of the blue. He will act in a certain way that you didn't expect. Not necessarily in a negative way. Unpredictable does not mean negative. It just means totally unexpected. The Earth, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo are very, very predictable. Like a Swiss clock. You know exactly what they're going to do, how they're going to react, how they're going to behave, what their opinion will be, usually if you know them well. With Aquarius, you cannot always know. Why do you do this? Because I feel like it. That may be the only answer. Not necessarily, they won't necessarily explain themselves. It's, there's a little bit of unpredictability, and that has to do with their desire to become, to be independent and to do things as they, as they feel like doing it at that moment. So they can suddenly shock you with amazing statements and actions. An Aquarius can wear something without bothering to check if it conforms to the occasion, the style. Now this is much more for a man than it is for a woman, obviously. He can do this deliberately to show his refusal to conform. He'll wear, you know, the, remember those wide ties in the 70s? And a real Aquarius is capable of wearing a funny looking tie just for the sake of proving a point. I don't care what the style is. Why do I need to follow the style in, in France? I'll make up my own style. They're a little bit rebellious not conforming, and they're indifferent, they don't care. If you laugh at him, he will laugh back. It doesn't bother them. They're a mixture of cold, practicality, and eccentric instability. And what that means is that, not that they're not stable, but it's sometimes that they do things in an eccentric, unusual way. And they have an intuitive empathy with the mentally disturbed. Now this, this point that I wrote over here is so true. I've, I've seen this so many times. Of all the 12 signs, the best ones for dealing with meshuganess, you know what that means? With people who are not stable, with people who are ill, that use an Aquarius. Somehow they have it in them that as soon as you put them close to them, they start talking. The guy calms down. They have the ability to reduce the anxiety of the insane, calming hysterical people and soothing frightened children. Just leave it to an Aquarius. Just their presence. And they're not making a big show. Somehow their presence, they're talking, they're communicating with that hysterical, with that disturbed person. They have something in them more than any other sign. I'm sure other signs, Virgos can do a good job. They're very devoted and very patient. 
No, Aquarius, somehow, they have it in their symptom. You know, I've, tried, I've tested this one, actually, you know, with people who were very hysterical, people who were nervous, and sent somebody, you know, who was an Aquarius. I, this one I actually tested, and the, and the woman happened to say, you know what, usually I would go crazy, I would not be patient, and I would not do what I was supposed to do, but because that individual was here at that moment, I was completely calm. I don't know why. She herself did not know why. It's an Aquarius. He's a revolutionary type and an idealist. Always trying to figure out how to change what is wrong and how to pr improve the world. They're very much always thinking about changing things, improving things. Many in this sign are amongst the greatest discoverers and inventors, gifted with a sharp and deep, and deep perception of things. They also have a very strong power of concentration. However, many of their ideas are only in the dreaming stage. If you look at an Aquarius very closely, you will see he may, his eyes are dreaming. In other words, he's, he's all over the place, thinking about all sorts of things. They spend a lot of time fantasizing about them. Did I spell that right? I couldn't find it in the dictionary to fantasize. There's no fantasize, it's fantasizing. But anyway, you get the point. They, they spend a lot of times dreaming about things, and they don't necessarily implement everything. They don't necessarily ever, ever get to what they want to. Their ideas are great ideas. Some of their ideas are eventually discovered or put into work 20, 30 years down the road. Thomas Edison. I mean, a lot of discoverers, a lot of inventors were Aquarius. M many more presidents of the United States, I think, also were Aquarius. You have Lincoln, you have Roosevelt, the second Roosevelt, the, what's his name, uh, FDR. FDR. You have uh, Ronald Reagan, and now that I mention these names, especially Ronald Reagan that you can identify with, most people here do not remember FDR, right? Uh, unless you read about him or Lincoln, you will see a lot of the characteristics in these leaders. So they spend a lot of time dreaming about things. They don't necessarily always get to what they, they'd like to do. And this is another thing that is very typical of Aquarius. He's the most misunderstood of all the signs. They suffer terribly in their lives from misunderstanding. I would, I would venture to say that most Aquariuses have this problem. Not everybody understands them. Now you can't blame people because <laughs> there's some unpredictability about them, but they have a very unique nature, a nature that on the one hand are, is very witty and funny, but they can be idealists and serious and stubborn about certain beliefs and what they want to accomplish. And Part of it has to do also with the, the fact that, even though I didn't write it down over here, is that even though they're friendly, they're, they can be very reserved. They're not revealing about their feelings. See, they're friendly and open and communicative, but when it comes to their feelings, they're not very much revealing. So you can understand it's partly their fault why they're misunderstood. But it is, not, it, it is somewhat of a complex nature, especially that there is some unpredictability. So they're not understood which makes them sometimes feel isolated. He can have many and varied interests, from politics, cars, medical discoveries, to taking on an interest in elderly people. I mean, an Aquarius can have all of these at the same time. Many hobbies, many interests. Their outlook, outlook is broad and seldom prejudiced. He has a strong brotherhood instinct and is very tolerant. The reason why they're very tolerant has a little bit to do with the fact that they are an air element, and air is liberal. And that's good in some ways. The, the liberal air or liberal element allows for certain things. It's not the rigid earth that things have to be this way. It's not the fire who has these crazy ideas of, you know, of, that he wants to carry out, and which may clash, and he may step on someone as a result. You know, fire steps on people. Right? But air is like air, you know, accepting, tolerant, and that's why they tend, a lot of them tend to be liberals. I don't think they, chose, they, they vote for the Democrat Party. That has something to do with the, 
the, their outlook and philosophy, but uh, they can be more liberal. He can walk through affluent societies and slums alike. To him, he's not looking just for the money. He's not looking to, for the rich. He can get along with everyone. He's actually, I'm, and I'm, I, I did put it down later, he's actually one of the very few signs that can just get along with almost anyone. Almost anyone, if you choose us to, anyone, almost anyone. A lot of the other signs are pretty much either they are attracted, not attracted, interested, not interested. He can get along with almost everyone. The typical Aquarius six friendship and does not limit himself to just a couple close ones. Now, last time we spoke about Capricorn, right, or Taurus. Some signs have very few friends, but the very few are, they're very close with. And if they're lucky, they have one true friend. Aquarius can be close, can be close if he chooses to, but he usually does not limit himself so much. Some Aquariuses, however, if they're not very typical, will be similar to Capricorn, in that they will have a small circle of very close friends, but they will be friendly with the rest of the world. It all depends how typical they are. But usually there is an emphasis in this sign of being friends with everyone. It's so funny about Aquarius that because of their emphasis on friendship that even if they broke up with someone, they, they don't, they're not enemies. They'll always consider them a friend. Okay, we broke up, so we're no longer husband and wife or whatever, but we'll still be friends. And Aquarius will continue to be a friend to his ex, ex-spouse, ex-whatever. He will call them a friend. However, he's very cold to those who have an ego, which very much turns him off. Remember we spoke about that before? They, have, they don't like people who have an ego. That turns them off completely. They completely turn cold to, to those who have an ego. He will give you his opinion frankly, but will not dictate to you how you should think or how you should live your life. But neither will he want you to tell him how to live his life. Unlike, here I give some examples for those of you in case you were not here, so you should see the difference. Unlike Aries, Leo, and Gemini, they have no desire to hard sell their ideas to others. Aries, Leos, and Geminis, especially Aries and Leo, they want to sell their ideas. They are the salesmen. They are the ones who want to convince you of something they believe. Aquarius does not care if he convinces you or not. You want to listen to him? Fine. You don't want to do what he says? It's okay with him too. He's not going to hard sell his ideas. The Aquarian philosophy is that each individual should be respected. They believe in equality, brotherhood, love for all, live and let live, seek the truth, and experiment. They're very, very easy going about that. They rarely fight fiercely for a cause. Even though they're very much idealistic, they believe in certain things very, very much, they will not fight for it. They live their code and they let the Aries, Leo, Scorpio, and Sagittarius do all the fighting. Let these guys do the fighting because they, they will fight. Aquarius does not want to fight. They are more preoccupied with the reasons behind people's problems, listening to them and showing sympathetic understanding. That's more important than figuring out what the problem is. And even though I did not write that they can make good psychologists, but they can, obviously. He dislikes confrontations. There are other signs who also dislike confrontation. Capricorns also do not like confrontations. There are various signs that do not like confrontations. His opinions, however, will remain fixed no matter how much shouting and pressure. He's not as stubborn as Capricorn or Taurus. He's air, so he's logical. If you convince him, he will be convinced. And I give some advice for children who are Aquarius, how to allow them to come to do the right thing if they're being so stubborn. But usually, no matter how much you shout and pressure him, they're pretty fixed. In a debate, however, he can easily drift and not focus on what you're saying. If you're debating an Aquarius, <laughs> he, he, it's not going to be a good show because they get easily distracted. They think about other things and will not focus on what you're saying. Nevertheless, even though he's not focused on what you're saying, he will be able to pick up what's going on in the room. Somehow they have, they have a good antenna. They're able to pick up what's going on even though it appears that they weren't paying attention. Aquarius can be absent-minded. You heard of the term absent-minded professor? It's usually an Aquarius. I didn't say nerd. I said absent-minded. There's a big difference. 
In other words, they're not aware of everything. They are forgetful. They can forget the most important item on the grocery list. You give them a grocery list, the whole thing, the most important one, the one on top, they may forget that one. They're forgetful sometimes. They don't always remember people's names. He prefers a loose schedule and does not like to be pinned down to specific duties and obligations at specific times. Don't tell me when to do it. Whenever I get around to do it, I'll do it. But once he gives you his word, you can count that he will be punctual. Even though some signs are not very punctual and you cannot depend on them on being exactly on time, if he gives you his word, his word is his word. But if he does not give you his word, he's more casual. He doesn't want to be pinned down. He doesn't want to pressure. Remember, he's independent. He wants to do whatever he feels like it. So uh, things may not be done, may not get done exactly when you want them to, unless he gives you his word. He has an obstinate way of not letting you know what he's up to. Somehow Aquarius does not always reveal his motives. Just like he does not reveal his feelings, he does not always reveal his motives. And he, he, he may be up to something and he won't tell you. It may have a clever answer. He has, they have clever answers that give a false impression. Here, he is trying to hide his motives, give you an answer that gives the wrong impression. But, on the other hand, they despise lying, hypocrisy, and cheating, and avoid borrowing and lending. So, some people may consider this, this characteristic in Aquarius as contradictory. Here himself, he's avoiding to tell you 100% what he's up to, may give you the false impression intentionally so you do not know everything that he wants you to know. And here he hates hypocrisy and does not believe in cheating. He's an honest and truthful man. But it's not so much a contradiction. Because Aquarius can be very trusting after he's gotten to know you very well and then he opens up a little bit. But they're suspicious. They're not, they're not trusting of just everyone. So I would not call this a contradiction even though others may have called this a contradiction. He's definitely not into lying. He's not a hypocrite and does not tolerate those who are. And what you will find about Aquarius and Capricorn is, that is very, very much similar is that they don't like borrowing money. They don't like lending money either. Does anybody know why? I want to I see. I want to test you. I want to ask you. I want to I see if you can figure this one out. Why wouldn't somebody want to borrow money? Let's say you need money. Why not borrow the money? What could it be? Are you afraid you may forget to give it back? We said he's forgetful. Yeah. What? It's a responsibility? And he, he likes responsibilities. He's okay with responsibilities. Yes, yes that's true. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see that that's very very true that they don't do not they do not want to buy or spend on something that they cannot truly really afford. Yes, being dependent on someone. Yes, because they're independent. Very true. Yes, a failure. Yeah, it could be a little bit of all of that. Yeah, the the problem with borrowing. Yes. They don't want to inconvenience someone. What about if that person offers it, you know, let's say it's a bank, you know. Yeah. The, the, the simple explanation is they don't want to owe anyone. They'd rather do a favor and not have people do a favor to them. They don't want to owe. They don't want to owe people anything. They're, I mean, you can explain it deeper and deeper what's behind the psychology of not having to owe, but they're very independent. They want to help. They want to do others' favor. They don't want to receive necessarily from others and feel like you said perhaps a little bit dependent on someone else. But what about lending to someone else? I mean, they're nice and kind and generous. Why not lend? They don't want to have to confront them if they can't That's right. Remember, they don't like confrontations. And they and they. What did we say before? Izu chacham nolad. Right? Who sees the future? They know people may not pay. Now they have to confront them. And not only that, they're going to get into a fight with the guy. Right. Exactly. 
So they, they stay away from borrowing and lending. They would rather give you the money than lend it. A broken promise to him or a bad debt will hurt your friendship with him. If you, don't, if you did get some money from him and you didn't return it to him, that's it. The friendship is over. Or at least he won't give you the money the next time. That, that basically you lose trust with him. They keep their word and pay their bills and expect others to do so. The very, very strong characteristic of Aquarius. Now, you may say, okay, I know other signs who pay their bills, and I, all, I know other signs that keep their word. Yeah, but this is engraved in Aquarius. It's engraved. In other words, they'll tell you about it, and they, they'll write about it. Other signs, of course. Of course I pay my bills. Of course I keep up my own. No, no, no. Here, it's a principle. Is that, that's where people make the mistake of saying, oh, a lot of signs have this thing. Yes, it's true. A lot of signs are respectful. A lot of signs are responsible. And a lot of signs, if they give you the word, you can trust them. You know, but here... If I wrote it in Aquarius, it means that this is part of his motto. In other words, I pay, and I expect others to do so well. In other words, they will make an issue of it. This will be sensitive to them. In other words, if you don't pay their debt, they will make an issue of it. Where somebody else, okay, I'm makpeed about this too, but I won't make such an issue of it. They're not forgiving about this particular area. They're not forgiving. If somebody breaks their word to them or does not pay their bills. He does not trust easily, but once he accepts you, he's very loyal. If you are a real friend, he will not be influenced by any gossip about you. Many weeks can go by without him saying a word, and then suddenly he will surprise you with the most affectionate words and the most sincere expression on his eyes. Just to finish up the, the description of Aquarius here, I finished up with something, you know, nice that Aquarius even though may give the impression at times that he's not interested or that he's not so communicative in his feelings I'm talking about feelings right now you'll be surprised one of these days out of the blue he will say something so special and, and do it so sincerely that it will completely surprise you that's very typical of an Aquarius it could happen that two three weeks he didn't do anything he didn't say how uh, good morning or how are you doing he, Where's the warmth? Where's the effect? And all of a sudden, it will come very, very powerful. Because he feels like it at that moment. Okay, let's see some differences between the men and the women. Aquarius man, in a friendship, it's all you can ask for. Whether you're a woman or another man who, he's your friend. In a friendship, they can be the best friends. They're very, very loyal. Very unselfish. In feelings, however, they're not very revealing, but they're very considerate. In other words, they're not very... I explained it in, in number three. What does, I mean? what does it mean, not revealing? They're very platonic. Does everybody here know what platonic means? Platonic means it's a very deep, sincere, true feeling, but it's not as physical in its expression. They don't express it physically, necessarily. It all depends on the rising of the sign, the hour, of course. It all depends on many other factors, too. His interests are scattered everywhere. He has many interests. Unselfish and friends with everyone. Now, you may say, okay, that's nice to know, friends with everyone. No, no, no. You may not like that. You may want him to just spend time with you. So friends with everyone sounds good. It is good, but not for everyone. Depending on which sign you are, you may want him to be just with you. You don't want your house filled with a lot of friends coming over. So it all depends on how much friends with everyone he is. Will trust you and not be jealous? Not, not at all. Rarely unfaithful. They don't have the problem with unfaithfulness. May, I, should, I meant he may spend lots of time with friends. May neglect his own problems in the interests of others. And that is also very true of Aquarius. Very, very true. That sometimes they neglect themselves because, and, and deal with the problems of others. Hates extravagance. This is one of, the, one of the signs that hates the most extravagance. There's a few other signs too. This is one of them. Will not buy you mink coats and diamonds. If that's what you're looking for in a husband, Aquarius is not the man. It doesn't mean he won't buy you any jewelry. It just he's, he's not into all that waste. He's generous but will not go overboard. Does not like credit cards. Buys only if you can afford it. Is that important? Just for you to get to know him a little bit better. Don't let your career neglect to feed him or sue his buttons. 
Remember, he forgets. He doesn't do certain things by himself. He may need you to do it for him. May forget your wedding anniversary, but will suddenly out of nowhere buy you flowers. And I put in parenthesis, the reason for that is, who says it has to happen on certain days? I remember a situation where the Khatan and Kala were getting married. And the mother of the Khatan tells, tells her son, you know what, you've got, to get, you've got to give your wife a certain gift at a certain time. He says, no, I don't have to. Who says so? Where is it written? Which book? I'll give it whenever I feel like it. I'll give it whenever I want to give it. At the moment that I really feel like giving it. Right? That's an Aquarian type of, of uh, reaction. Why should I go by the norms? Why should I go and do things the way people do? I want to do things when I feel like doing them. Is it right or wrong? Well, it depends. You know. if, if you have a person on the other side who's expecting certain things, then she's going to be disappointed if she doesn't get it when you're supposed to get it. You forgot my anniversary date, forgot the wedding anniversary, or whatever it is. But all of a sudden, he will surprise you. Why, Why today? Because today, is, it's, I thought of you. You meant so much to me. I just, whatever. That could be very romantic. That could be very, very nice. It depends on the man and the woman. It all depends on if she cares for it, if she likes it, if she's in a bad mood. But that's the query. The query will do things when he feels like doing them. He's not ambitious about living in a high income bracket. That's the, if you're looking for money, I mean, for somebody who's going to be very ambitious and making a lot of money, he doesn't care about it. That's not a priority in his life. He, of course, he wants to make a decent living. You will find a lot of Aquarius who are millionaires. But it's not because they wanted it. It just it happened to them. They inherited it. It's somehow they were lucky. They had a good massage. But they were not. Most Aquarius, I can guarantee you, most of them will not make money a priority in their life. Aquarius woman. She's faithful, but a bit detached. That's at least the impression she gives when you first meet her. Seeks freedom, but will give you her complete allegiance. Oh, well, she's completely devoted, but she wants to be free. She wants to be independent. Money is never a primary consideration, just like with the man. She's not looking for a man that has a lot of money. Some women do. You know, I need a man, or some men you know, are looking for a woman who has money. Now with Aquarius, and that's good to know, right? If, uh, if you're a man and you're thinking of going out with an Aquarius woman, don't worry if you don't have too much money. That's not going to be one of the things that she's going to definitely put her hand, foot down. Passion is not her forte because she's not as physically expressive. But she's graceful, witty, and gets along with everyone. Sensitive and will walk away from infidelity. That's one of the things that will break the relationship if there's any sign of unfaithfulness. And that does not necessarily mean infidelity. It means anything. You're breaking your word or anything, they will walk away from it. Keeps motives hidden, but is truthful. Even though she's not revealing, but she's very truthful. Uncomfortable about owing money, just like the man. Can be indifferent, but has charming manners. Remember we talked about indifference. Indifference means sometimes it, she does not care. She does not uh, pay attention. It does not mean that she has no interest. It does not mean that she's, that she's uh, totally detached. She just doesn't feel that she has to get involved. May not conform to the style of dress. May wear the style of her grandmother. I just put that in for a little bit of uh, humor. But I mean it seriously. You know, she, she may grab something from the closet that's uh, totally not in style. If you see somebody wearing really something different, unusual, it could be an Aquarius. You know, because she wants to wear whatever she likes. Typical Aquarian, if you approach them, this is not in style. Why are you wearing this? Because I like it. Whoever says you have to wear what's in style, why can't you wear what you like? That's the problem a lot of people have in this generation, that they have to conform to a certain style. Just Speak to an Aquarian and he'll give you a few lessons about that, how you don't need to do that. I just wear what you like to wear, even if it's 25 years old and sitting in the closet. If it's beautiful then, why shouldn't it be beautiful now? Men have less of a problem with this than women do. For some reason, the women have to follow and have to dress according to what the street wears. Otherwise, they say, oh, you, oh, this is only for the winter, but it's summer now. You can't wear this. This is for winter. What's the big deal? But it's beautiful. 
Right? I'm sure the man would agree with me. What's wrong with wearing a beautiful suit? It's the wind in the summer. It's, if it's, it's not hot outside. It's, it's only 75 degrees. Just because it's, it's the month of August, I have to wear a dress that was made for the winter? Who wrote the book for those rules? Not an Aquarius. She's a relaxed about housework. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that her house is uh, not misudan, not organized, but she's more relaxed. She doesn't, she's not so, uh, she doesn't feel the pressure like Virgo. Oh, everything has to be clean and everything has to be organized. Everything has to be perfect. She's more relaxed about it. Wants to be treated as an equal. Never talk down to her. Now, I don't think any woman likes to be talked down to her, but to her it will make a big difference. Devoted and gentle with her kids, especially when ill, when the kids are ill. She takes care, remember, she takes care of the, the, of the people, of the elderly, of those who are not healthy. Do not be too critical or ultra-conservative with her. Remember, she's more of a liberal. Very good at reassuring. She can turn tears to laughter. Yes, an Aquarius woman or a man can take somebody who's quiet, crying and reassure them and bring laughter to them and take away the tears. That's an Aquarius. They can be very funny and patient and just very tolerant and understanding of this person who's hysterical, who's crying. Send, a, send an Aquarius. They'll take care of them. All right, what do you do if you have an Aquarius child? Aquarius child, they're sensitive, and you may not even know it because they don't always tell you what their feelings are. Very stubborn and independent. Again, independent meaning what? They like to do things their way. They can be very negative. What does negative mean? For a child, negative here means reacting easily with the word no. Can you do this for me? No. And it, why not? No. Just no. In other words, very negative. They don't feel like it. Let him think about it. What's the advice? Let him think about it. You know, think about it. Take your time. And eventually, if you let him think about it, an Aquarius will do what's sensible. Usually calm and docile, docile, yeah. but unpredictable. Practical and logical mind, and can be abs but can be absent-minded. They can forget things. He may tell you off if you cheat or lie. It's not, it would not come as a surprise if an auditor from the income tax comes to check this man's income tax. And the son, who's an Aquarius, tells his dad or his uncle, why did you cheat on your income tax? In front of the guy, in front of the auditor. You know, how, did you, how could you do that? This is an Aquarius who does not believe in cheating or lying. He will even tell off those who are even close to him when it comes to cheating or lying. How could you do that? <laughs> so be prepared. You know, be careful not to cheat or lie in front of him. I mean, you should never cheat and lie in front of anyone, but... They have grand dreams of what they want to do. Needs to organize his thoughts, maybe forgetful. Makes friends easily and loves to do favors for friends. As far as uh, some of the issues that he has, one advice is let him make his own decisions, but encourage him to act on them. He has a good mind. He's pretty solid, sensible. Don't let him think that it's coming from you. Let him make the decision. Usually he will make the right decision decision, but encourage him to act on them, because they can be dreamy and perhaps not, you know, implement whatever it is that they want to do. Advice for an Aquarius boss, uncomfortable in giving orders and directing others. Usually Aquarius, they're usually not the boss. The boss is a Capricorn, the boss is a, is a, is a Leo, a Cancer. These are the typical classical bosses. But if you happen to have an Aquarius boss, they're usually not that comfortable in giving orders. Very incompatible with the big shots. They don't like big shots. They're friendly to everyone. Now this is good. An Aquarius boss will be friendly, just as friendly to his secretary as he is to the bellboy, as he is to the janitor. Everybody remember, everybody is equal. Very friendly. Patient and calm. He may be forgetful and unpredictable. Has fixed opinions if you made up his mind, but he may surprise you with sudden changes. So be prepared. Does not approve of people who live above their income. Remember? This is, a, this is a big issue for Aquarius. They don't believe in that. 
He's not impulsive to give you a raise, but he's also not stingy. Hates dishonesty and expects you to do your best. Don't goof off. Very tolerant and not bothered by your lifestyle. Let's say, what, what I mean by lifestyle over here, let's say uh, somebody in the family is divorced, one of the kids is on drugs. He doesn't care. He's understanding. That won't move him, in other words, in a negative way. He's not bothered by that. Will not look down at you, but don't break your word to him and don't cheat him. Remember that? That's a very important point to him. Nothing shocks him. They're very, they can be very indifferent, so he's not shocked. He has good understanding of human nature. I understand that. I can, I can go along with that. That's okay. He can take things in stride. Very easy going about certain things. About other things, like cheating and lying, totally not tolerant. But about other things, about human beings, about people, no problem. And he may be wearing different color socks. Oh, boss, how come one sock is brown and the other sock is red? Well, he forgot. And even if he forgot, you know, what he might say? Who cares? Whoever said they have to match, right? That's the typical Aquarian. Big deal. What's well, a big deal? And it's not a big deal, right? It doesn't have to be in style. It doesn't have to match. What's well, a big deal? That's Aquarius. Before we go to the Midot, I want to tell you a story of a typical Aquarius husband. We said before that sometimes Aquarius can be quiet for a while. Sometimes Aquarius can appear indifferent and not involved. And sometimes they can even be in a mood that they don't want to be bothered. There was such a husband, a husband, an Aquarius husband, sitting on his couch. Whatever it is that he was doing, reading, and his, and his wife was nagging him day after day, week after week, about the oven that was broken. We need a new oven. We need to fix it. Why don't you just call? Why don't you just get up and make the phone call? Why don't you do that? And he did not react. No reaction. Not even a word. Very, very strange, no? And now this woman, hopefully, would know her husband after many years of living with an Aquarius man. But apparently she did not understand what's going on with him. All of a sudden, one day, out of the blue, she hears a knock on the door, and this company arrives with a new oven. She didn't ask him. She didn't say anything. It was many, many days or weeks after the fact of the last time that she told him. All of a sudden, all of a sudden it came. Whenever he felt like it, that's when he took care of it. He didn't want to be bothered at that moment. He didn't want to do it for some reason. Who knows? All of a sudden, in an unpredictable way, out of nowhere, she got what she needed. I mean, he's sensible. Obviously, he knows. We need it. But he did it whenever it was comfortable, whenever it was easy and good for him. All right, real quickly, Midot. Character. What does an Aquarius need to work on? Or what does he have? Does he have Gava? Is he an arrogant person? He's not really an arrogant person. He hates big shots. He may be conceited, but that's not Gava. Anava, does he have to develop a little bit of humbleness? Not really because he's very tolerant of people. So he, use, he can be humble. Humbleness and tolerance pretty much go together. So he's not, he doesn't have a difficulty with being humble, except if he's very conceited, as we said before. Conceited or aloof sometimes is a problem for somebody who's trying to develop or to work on anava. So depending on how much of a problem he has of being detached and aloof, he may or may not have to work on anava. But at least it's not such a problem for him. Busha, Busha means timid. He, yes, usually he can be timid. Doesn't have a problem. Azut is he is he very aggressive or chutzpah? What would you say? Does he have azut? Azut usually belongs to fire, the fire element. The air element is not so aggressive. He does not shout back, so he doesn't really have the problem of azut. Ahava, is he loving? He's friends with everyone, but he perhaps could learn to be a little bit more physical in, in his, uh, in his how, how should we say it, in his expression. It's usually not a problem because Aquarians are very sincere. They, uh, they're very loyal and devoted. They take care of those who are the elderly and the sick. So they usually don't have a problem of developing a hava in a more general or broad sense. Sina, do they hate? No, because they, want, they, they treat everybody equally. Rachamin, do they have compassion? They don't, they don't lack compassion. They're not as compassionate as the water signs, the sentimental signs. But they're, they're okay. 
Compassion means also understanding and being helpful. They like to do favors. So it's usually not a problem. Achzariyut, are they cruel? No, they're not really cruel, right? They don't uh, uh, withhold something from someone. They don't uh, necessarily uh, do something in a cruel way. They're more gentle. Simcha, are they happy or are they the more serious reserve type? They're not too serious like Capricorn. And they're usually more friendly and reassuring. So they're not far from Simcha, but they don't have an overabundance of Simcha. They are God. Do they worry? No, not at all. This is totally lacking. Aquarius is very takes things in stride. He's easygoing. They don't really worry that much. They can become anxious about something, but they're not, they don't worry. Harata, do they regret? Not easily, and not, 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 not very, very fast. Sometimes they think very, very strongly about what they believe in. They don't like making mistakes. Remember, they're confident. So they don't necessarily regret very quickly, but they're logical. Since they're logical, they're not going to be so stubborn as to continue in a narrow-minded way. They're not narrow-minded. They actually don't like it when people call them narrow-minded. They're, they're totally not narrow-minded. So harata, if they are convinced, if they're logical, that they've made a mistake, they will regret it and definitely make peace if it's, a, if, if it's a, that they did something wrong to someone. Usually not a problem. Kaas, anger. They don't have that much anger. They can get upset at certain things, but it's not a problem. Ratzon, can you appease them? Yes, they want to make. They want to be friends. They want to. They want peace. They want harmony. They don't want the confrontation. So you can, if shaler ratzot, you can appease them. Kinah, are they jealous? No problem with jealousy. Zrizut, are they zrizim? Are they, are they fast? Are they quick to do things? Not necessarily. They can use a little help sometimes to get things done. They dream too much. They may need a little bit of push to get things done. Zehirut, are they cautious? Yes, they think about things before they do. They don't jump into it. Atzlut, are they lazy? Aquarius is usually not lazy. He's not the lazy type. But he can't he can take his time to do things. He can't push things off. He can't procrastinate. Is that laziness? Not exactly, but it, comes, it may come close to it. So you have to be careful. But it's not true laziness. Nedivut, are they generous? Yes, they can be generous. Tsaikanut, are they stingy? Not at all. They, they, they help people. Zechira, do they remember everything or do they forget? <laughs> They're forgetful. But they don't forget the, the, the good things. They forget the, you know, the bad things. So Zechira, they, 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 they do remember their debts. They do remember things that they need to remember. But they can't forget certain things. So Shichecha, they do have a problem with forgetting certain things. Do they forget somebody did them a wrong? No. Because it depends what it is. If he did not pay, if he did not pay up a debt that he owes money, they won't forget it for the rest of their lives. Shatika, can they keep their mouth shut? Sometimes you have to keep their mouth shut. Yes, they don't have a problem. They can keep their mouth shut for weeks. If they want to, they don't have a problem with keeping quiet. They're not the, they're not the very talkative type. Sheker, do they lie? Totally not. They're against it. Emet, are they truthful? Yes, they usually are truthful. You can trust them. Hanifut, will they flatter? No, because Hanifut has to do with being truthful. They don't flatter someone. If they don't believe he deserves, they, they won't just praise him with words that do not relate to him. La Shonara, they're not into gossiping. But remember, this is an air sign. An air sign is can, can talk sometimes. But usually the, the advantage that Aquarius has is he checks things out. He's logical. He's tolerant of people. He may say, well, then, then that's not necessarily so. You know. So he doesn't have so much a problem of La Shonara. Teshuvah. The Teshuvah means the ability to be able to correct your mistakes, to return to Hashem, to, to amend. Do they have the ability to do so? It's not always easy for them because they think they know better. They think they may be right. And that can sometimes be a problem. But they're logical. If you convince them, if you convince them that they're wrong, then they will make the changes. What about the Midah of learning Torah? For Torah, you need Hatmata. You need constancy. You need consistency. They are patient. They are tolerant. They are studious. They have an interest. So it usually should not be a problem for the Aquarius to, to learn and to, and to become knowledgeable. How about Yerat Shemaim? Yerat Shemaim may be a problem because they don't like authority. They rebel against authority. So Yerat Shemaim, the fear of heaven, sometimes may be a problem for one who is not religious. 
Now you have to be God-fearing. Now you have to pay attention to what the rabbis tell you. Now you have to pay attention to what God says. No, I don't. I don't like it. I don't agree. So your Atshamai may be a little bit of a problem. They're rebellious. Sablanut, patience, perfect. They can be very patient and tolerant. Ta'avot, they don't really have desires. They don't care so much about money as others do. Kavod, they don't pursue kavod. Nekama, they don't take revenge. So they're not into that. They love everyone. Dikaon, can they become depressed? Depression doesn't really belong to Aquarius. They can become, they can feel isolated. They can be a little bit moody and quiet. And they, they, want their, they may want their peace. They, want, they may want a certain amount of time of quiet. Don't bother them. They may want that couple of hours and you need to leave them alone. But that's not depression. It's just that they need, they need to organize their thoughts. And last, Midais lets us notice, clowning around or mockery, they're, they're not the types to, even though they, they could be witty and humorous, they don't make jokes. They, don't, they, they take life seriously. They don't make fun of people. They don't look down on people. They are respectful of people. They're the humanitarian types. So in conclusion, what we have seen is a very interesting mazal that belongs to the air element that just like everyone else has certain strengths and has certain weaknesses. No one is perfect. But this particular mazal, I personally feel, has a lot of ma'alot, has a lot of strengths that we can all learn from that are very, very important. And one of them is to be tolerant with everyone, to be accepting of everyone, to love everyone, even though they're different. That's, there are some midot in this mazal that are very, very important. And we can adapt them. After all, what is life all about? About adapting the good that we see in others. You know, as much as we can, learning from others. But obviously the only way to do that is to get to know the differences that we all have. The trick, part of the trick of working on yourself is getting to know who you are. Part of the trick of getting to, of, of accepting others is understanding them, that they're not evil, they're not against you, they're not out to get you. That's their nature. Their nature is they're more detached. They're more like this. If we understand people for what they are, that that is their nature, we will be more accepting of them. It does not mean that they have to remain like that. That's it, accepting the way I am. This is the way I am, accept me. No, no. A couple or two friends who have differences amongst them, nonetheless, have to respect each other, but have to try to somehow uh, adapt to each other, to, to be sensitive to the other, to not only accept the other one, but to, to be sensitive. This means so much to him or her then go along with it. Don't be so stubborn, don't be so selfish. Be tolerant, be easygoing, and in this way, you will have a much more happier life. Thank you very much. The air element, or Aquarius, is not an emotional individual, not a warm, not an affectionate. It's just that that is not the emphasis. That is not his forte. And you need to keep that in mind, because everyone has an area where he's strong in, an area where he's weakened. We do not necessarily change. It is very difficult to change. It's almost impossible to change. But we can adapt, adapt certain habits and learn from other people as to what should be done, what is correct to be done, what is not correct. But it does not mean that we will be changing our natures. It does not mean that we can become someone else. In some ways, you are who you are. But you can definitely learn to refine yourself, you find your midot, your character. You can work on yourself. You can give a better impression. You can learn to get along better with those who are not similar to you. There's a lot of things that one can do through his free will. If he wants to succeed in life, succeed in being a better parent, a better husband, better wife, and so forth, then he has to learn certain rules. One has to know himself. And then... Hopefully, if he has the strong will of making this important decision of not necessarily changing myself, but hopefully adapting myself to certain situations and, and attempting to live with those who are different than me by respecting the differences, then you can get along almost with anyone. So even though there are differences, it is possible to learn what those differences are, and to adapt to them, and to live with them, to get along with them. As I always do, give a small introduction. 
Some of the points that you will notice have to do with the sign. It means you can't be overconfident. It means you, be, you need to be willing to seek the advice of others. All that is important in order to predict as best as possible what the consequences of your actions will be. So a true chacham does not jump into anything. He looks at the situation, evaluates it, deliberates it, and then goes on to decide whether he's going to do it or not. Point number two, don't look down at any human being. Alti baz lechol adam. Rabbis tell us in Perkei Avot, be very careful. Every human being is special in some way. There may be a, a time in the future where you may need him. And that man who's cleaning the streets, who's a janitor, may one day be mayor of Los Angeles. Yes. So alti baz lechol adam. That person who appears to be very low, very simple, and nothing in your eyes, Nonetheless, he's a human being. Give him the respect. Don't look down at him. Everyone is special in some way. Number three, be the first to greet and greet all. And that is another famous saying. When you see somebody in the street, it's Shabbat, say Shabbat Shalom to him. Don't wait for him to say it. He may be distracted, he may not be thinking about you, may not observe you. You be the first one. If you're not the first one and he noticed you, he may think that you have something against him. So always be the first one. Why should I be the first one? Let him be the first one? Well, it's just a problem with the ego. Be the first one because it's important to, get, to greet everyone, to be friendly to everyone. So there's two parts to this idea of Magdim B'Shalom Kol Adam. Magdim, Tiyata Kodem, you'd be the first. And the Kol Adam, every human being, Jews and non-Jews. It says, it doesn't say. Mazal Dli is one of the air element signs. And for those of you who were here in the very beginning when we spoke about the different Yesodot, it's important to keep in mind that we, even though we have 12 signs, we have four elements. And what that means is that there are three signs that share an element. And we discussed the differences, important differences about the elements, whereas fire tends to be much more impulsive, energetic, exciting. The earth elements tend to be more rigid, more stubborn, more practical. Air is more intellectual, more communicative, more expressive in certain ways, and more logical. And the water elements are the more sentimental, the more emotional, the more feeling. Every one of those elements in itself tells us a lot about an individual. In other words, if anybody is in a Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini, they will have many things in common many things that they will share in common. They're very similar. Nonetheless, they are also very, very different in their style, in the way they communicate, in what's important to them. But it's important to keep in mind that tonight we're going to be speaking about the air element, Aquarius. And Aquarius is not really very similar to Libra or Gemini. You will notice quite a few differences. But don't forget, this is an air element. Nevertheless, and what I, what I mean by an air element, and I need to emphasize this, is that there's no emphasis, there's no priority, there's not as much importance as there is, for example, in the water element's need for emotion. And that, that, that does not mean that they say you would leave, it says everybody. So greet everyone. We've already covered the point of the seven panim yafot, which means to greet everyone with a happy countenance, not with a bitter face. In other words, when you do greet people, you want to be nice, you want to smile. This form of communication, even though it's silent, it says a lot. It produces positive atmosphere amongst people. It helps unite people. It's, it's a very good thing for society where people greet themselves. As you may have heard from time to time, Goim coming over to you. They don't know you from anywhere. Hi, how are you doing? Good morning. You know, try that in New York and they'll, they'll know that you're not from there. Because you know, in New York, they don't say these things, but it's not nice. The correct way is to greet people, to be friendly to everyone, and not to wait for the other one to greet us. The fourth point may be very 
familiar to you, envy, desire, and the pursuit of honor drive a person out of this world and perhaps even of the world to come. These are three, um, I guess we can call them traits or bad habits that people may have, people in general. And if one, anyone possesses any one of the three, if they're so powerful in themselves that they can drive a person out of this world. Drive a person out of this world means that he can leave this world prematurely before his time. He was meant to live to 80, but he goes at 45, Chaz Shalom. Why? Because he's never happy. He's always envious. He always wants to have what the other one has. He's jealous. Or he, he has many, many desires that he can't get his hand on because he doesn't have the money, can't afford it. Or he, he, he so much pursues the honor, wants everybody to honor him, but somehow they're not honoring him, so it eats him up. That's called kavod. Some people have a problem. It's a disease. Some of us, who cares? You know, as long as people are nice, they don't want to honor, that's fine. Who needs the honor? Either the sign is lacking in them and has to learn from them, or these are some of the strong points in the sign that we can learn from. Rabbis tell us in Pirkei Avot, Ezeu Chacham, Halomed Mikol Adam, and it is written elsewhere, Ezeu Chacham, Haro'et Hanolad, who is smart, he who is prepared to learn from everyone, or he who considers the consequences of his actions. Smart is more important than intelligence. Intelligence is Chochmah, one that has, uh, or Yeda actually, one has acquired a certain amount of yeda, of chokmah, but does not necessarily apply it, does not necessarily have the interest of learning more. A true chacham, the rabbis tell us, is one who is always thirsty to learn more. And that is why a talmid chacham is called a talmid chacham. He's always a student. He does not ever, never consider himself to be an expert. Always a talmid, always a student. A true intelligent, true smart, clever man is always prepared to learn, even if it means learning from someone who's younger than him. He's interested in the truth, he's interested in the chokhmah, and therefore, what's the difference? Who has it? I'm going to go and get the chokhmah. That is a true chacham that is not willing to compromise. Chokhmah is important to him, and wherever he can find it, he will learn it. Even if it means learning from somebody who's younger than him. Imagine somebody who has an ego, that may be in conflict with his desire of, of learning something. Learning from someone younger, but he's not a real chacham if he's not willing to learn from someone who's younger. From everyone. And he who considers the consequences of his actions. Aroet anulad, which means what? That you think about the situation before you embark on it, before you do anything. What are the pros and cons of everything? A true chacham needs to evaluate. And in order to evaluate, it means